Are you thinking about relocating to the Seattle area? Considering a move here to this area can be overwhelming because there is a lot to consider and real estate isn't cheap. I just had a client uh, contact me yesterday who is currently living in Silicon Valley and considering the move up here north to the beautiful Pacific Northwest. So uh, we had a nice long talk. We talked for about an hour. I put together a detailed email from him and I wanted to just share some of the things that we discussed because I thought maybe they would be helpful for you. This is Emily Cressy, your digitally enabled Puget Sound community advisor. So when you look at Seattle, the first thing that you might want to think about is where you will be working. If you know you'll be working in downtown Seattle, in downtown Bellevue, Tacoma or Everett, or maybe one spouse will be working in one city and one the other. That is the first thing to think about because traffic can be pretty bad here and looking at the commute is an important factor. So let's dive into this. And just for the sake of conversation, uh, these folks were coming from California, uh, looking at a price range anywhere from three quarters of a million, 750,000 to uh, up to 3 million potentially, which is a very broad range and really goes from uh, your bread and butter move up home to some of the nicest neighborhoods in the city. So let's look at where you may or may not wanna live and what your money buys in these different locations. So first I'll start by showing you a map of Everett. So if you can see my screen, uh, Everett is highlighted at the top and this yellow line is I-5. This is the big interstate highway that goes from Canada down to Mexico via California. And this is the main north-south road that travels through the city of Seattle and down south to the airport and Tacoma. Uh, we also have 405, which is a loop of I-5 that goes around the east side of the lake. So it starts up here in the Linwood Bothell area and 405 goes around the east side of the lake through Kirkland and Bellevue and rejoins with I-5 down here in the Renton area near SeaTac Airport. Additionally, if you're trying to get back and forth across the lake, we have two bridges here. One is called 520. That's a floating bridge and it's recently become a toll road to help ease traffic congestion. And there's also I-90, which is another interstate highway and is not a toll road. This, this is kind of the north end of Seattle. This is the south end. And this area between the two bridges is really our downtown core with all of the high tech, um, I'm sorry, the high rise buildings. The high tech area is, this is south, this is Lake Union, what I'm kind of highlighting with my cursor here. So south Lake Union in this area, has been getting redeveloped and they're doing a lot of uh, building there. It was a low rise three story area and that's where a lot of Paul Allen's developments have been going in with uh, Amazon having a lot of office space there and Google. I don't know what will happen if uh, the work from home trend continues. We may see a little bit of a decline in usage of some of that office space, but I think that there's enough of it and the city is big enough that um, it will come back. Uh, so anyway, if you're driving into Seattle or Bellevue, starting out up here in the Everett area is about as far north as I would recommend for an easy commute. If you're going into Everett or beyond north, uh, it's for affordability purposes. It's quite a long haul. Uh, I used to live in Linwood, and when I would commute into downtown Seattle, it would take about an hour and I would go on a bus. It was actually pretty convenient. I would hop on the bus at the park and ride by the freeway and get a nonstop bus ride uh, down here to the Seattle center area. Uh, you can, Shoreline is where, uh, this blue dot is pretty much where I live right now. And uh, my husband has commuted to the South Lake Union area by driving to a park and ride on 175th and Meridian. Uh, that takes about 10 minutes. Then he would take the bus for about 20 minutes, a very fast bus ride down into Seattle, and then uh, hop off the bus and maybe walk 10 or 15 minutes to his office. So it's really not too bad, except on the way back, uh, when you're coming home around six, there can be a wait 
to catch the bus, especially if you're toward the end of the the bus where the buses leave downtown Seattle and get on the freeway, uh, there can be a long wait for those buses. If you're driving it, you can also drive it in about 45 minutes uh, if you leave early. My my mom was an attorney downtown and it would take her about 40 minutes to, to make this drive leaving at 7.15 in the morning. Uh, parking in downtown Seattle is not cheap, uh, maybe 300 bucks a month. So if you want to drive, you can factor that in and you'll be going through bumper to bumper traffic for the most part. So if you like listening to the radio, that's good. If you would prefer to be on your computer or your phone, consider the bus. Uh, we also have the light rail coming through. So right now uh, the light rail goes from SeaTac Airport up into Seattle, and then they've built it out uh, over here to the University of Washington area. So the University of Washington is kind of on this edge here by Lake, Lake Washington. And um, eventually they're building light rail that's gonna go across to the east side as well as up north to Linwood and Everett. So there is a lot of development and construction coming in along those freeway areas with higher density apartment buildings and condos with the idea of getting people onto the light rail at a walkable distance from their home. In my experience, uh, driving, from, driving to the airport is faster than going on the light rail because at least on the south end, there are a lot of stops and it's not a super direct route. So it's slow, cheap, but slow. All right, so if you're driving in every day, you can live out here in Everett. It's a long haul, but um, starter homes, maybe 400,000 and for 750,000, you can get you know, an older four bedroom home, 3000 square feet with half an acre of land or something like that. So. Uh, this is a good place to go for affordability. And if you only have to go into town once or twice a week, you know, work, work commute variations there, uh, it might be worth it. The farthest north I've ever lived is Linwood. And like I said, it took about an hour on the bus and it wasn't bad at all. Um, now I live in Shoreline. Uh, that can take 45 minutes driving or on the bus. And uh, one of the things, if you if commute is a big concern for you, um, we can actually do a search in the MLS based on commute time. So if you say, you know, I need to be at this address at eight o'clock and I don't want to spend more than half an hour driving, then we could do a perimeter. It's not necessarily a circle um, of where, where the border would be. You want to live within this area in order to make that commute time. Uh, so there's some, some cool tricks there. If you need help uh, monitoring your commute, you can. One thing that I've seen is that there's a lot of interest in this area, kind of the Linwood Bothell area at the top of the lake. It has great access to getting on either freeway. So if somebody is going down to Seattle and somebody is going down to Bellevue or even the Microsoft campus in Redmond, this is a great area. It has good schools and good freeway access. And so I'm gonna pause and just do a sidebar here. Uh, everybody is curious about schools and it's certainly an important factor whether you have kids that are going to a school or whether you just want to be in a good school district where you can see uh, properties appreciate because people want to live there. So a school a website that you can visit is called greatschools.org and it can show you a map like this. So you could enter in a zip code or an area that you might be interested in living in and it gives you a ranking of uh, what the schools are rated and where they're located. So you can see here in this North Shore area, uh, you know, this school is a five, which is not very good, but there are some, uh, you know, here's a nine, here's a nine down here, and they're all relatively good. So if you're comparing areas, that greatschools.org site is a wonderful resource to take a look at. Okay, so down here, I've highlighted this map. Uh, this is Shoreline. And this, I think, is a really nice area because it's just north of the Seattle city limits. So this bottom of shoreline is really where uh, you get into Seattle. And just because of laws and police enforcement and that type of thing, shoreline tends to be a little bit nicer than Seattle itself. 
Um, for example, I have observed that there seems to be an increase in prostitution going on along this uh, roadway here, Highway 99, Aurora. The whole area, it's a, a very busy uh, arterial and it just tends to have, you know, more buses, more walking around, more homelessness here on this road, uh, Highway 99 and Aurora, and also this road here, which is called Lake City Way. So these are nice because they help you commute into work, but living right next to them is not great. <laughs> um, also down here in Ballard, we've had a lot of increase in the last 10 years with homelessness problems. My sister used to live here actually, and she was right next to a park, which was great when she moved in. But uh, towards the end, uh, you know, she had a baby and then she heard from the neighbors, they were finding hypodermic needles in the park. Um, so just as you get to be more urban and more Seattle, there are more of these types of issues to work with. Uh, the nicest areas tend to be along the water uh, because of water views, we, you know, we've got a lot of water here. It's nice to take advantage of it. So uh, the, the better neighborhoods are along the water and none of it is really too far to get into the freeway. And then typically as you move south, you'll have higher, higher cost of living because it's a shorter commute. So I'll, at the end of this, I'll go through what I consider some of the luxury areas in town. But uh, just in terms of crime and um, homelessness and just maybe not the nicest places to live, I would stay away from real close to the highways. Uh, but Shoreline, like I said, is north of Seattle. Uh, this little pocket right here is called Lake Forest Park. And this is um, a nice, reasonable commute. I've, this is the area I've always lived in, except our first house was out here because in Linwood because we could not afford Shoreline. <laughs> but I do a lot of work in Shoreline. I really like this particular area. So um, just, and to give you a reference point, the cheapest I have been able to find a home that's not a complete rehab property in Shoreline this year is about 575,000. That's a three bedroom starter home in the shoreline area. If you want kind of a nicer move up type of home, you're gonna be looking at about 750,000. Um, a million dollars would buy you a 3,000 square foot home. You could probably get four bedrooms, uh, potentially a water view or something like that. And then if you're going above one and a half million, uh, you would be starting to move into what I would consider a little bit more of a luxury feel with your home. So let's take a look at uh, what you can buy for some of the higher price points here. So this home is in uh, Edmonds and it's priced at 1.7 million. It's got, I, I don't remember the number of bedrooms, four or five bedrooms and a water view. And Edmonds is, um, I think I've got a map. Edmonds is right here on the water and there's actually a ferry, this dotted line indicates there's a ferry that comes in from Kingston. So Edmonds is beautiful and it's, it's a hillside. So it's called the Edmonds Bowl. It's like sitting in stadium seats. Everyone uh, from within the bowl can look out onto the water. And of course the city goes on here um, and not all of it is as prestigious as the, the bowl where you can see the waterfront. Uh, so this is a nice area and then Richmond Beach along here, similar concepts. Uh, there's a nice beach park here. There's a nice beach park here and uh, those water views and the sunset are, are lovely. It is primarily older homes, but I am seeing some infill where it's like, hey, this lot is so valuable. We don't need this small old home on it. We're going to knock it down and build something nice. So this is a, a luxury home in uh, the Edmonds area. Now for the same price point, once you start moving down to the city, this is 1.6 million and uh, it's a smaller home on a smaller lot. You can see it's urban, you know, there's the neighbor on that side. Uh, it's boxy, it's new construction. Uh, in the newer construction, Seattle is moving as much as possible toward high density where you have a small yard and the house, you know, if it used to be two or three lots, maybe now it's, you know, six townhomes are going in or something. This is urban infill property where they're trying to get more square footage, bigger homes into these neighborhoods that have previously 
you know, been built in the 1950s, the post-war era. Um, they're just so valuable due to their location that we're having things uh, torn down and rebuilt. So this would be in uh, the north of Ballard. So kind of right along here, uh, because it's farther south from Edmonds, it's a shorter commute and uh, just not getting quite as much of a spread, that feeling of elegance, but still new construction, nice home. Uh, this is a new housing development going in in Kirkland. So I expect they'll have houses on this grassy side as well. This is a rendering, but this is sort of your, you know, 2,800 square foot, four bedroom, you know, everything looks the same, very uniform. If you like that idea of living in a, like a planned community or something where all the homes are similar in size and construction and age, then looking on the east side of the lake is going to give you more options because that's where they have enough land that they can actually build these types of things. So newer construction, uh, modern construction, uh, take a look at the east side. Kirkland is um, right along here. So it's north of Bellevue. Let's see if I have a different map. Okay, this map shows Kirkland is right here and it's just north of Bellevue. It's the area north of Bellevue along Lake Washington. So uh, the Lake Washington School District is excellent and um, a lot of water views. There are some hospitals and things along here. So this is a great area, especially if you're commuting into Bellevue or uh, the Microsoft campus. And newer construction there as well. And then this home this is a two million dollar home so again we're going up a little bit in the price point but this is magnolia which i would consider uh, sort of a primo location this is the magnolia bluff just uh, west of the amazon and google campus just west of south lake union and this magnolia bluff is uh, got some great views of puget sound here and is very close to downtown so it's prestigious for two reasons and uh, there's a wonderful park here discovery park that's just enormous and you can get lost in it it's gorgeous uh so this is a, a primo good location uh, you can get into downtown easily uh, my friend who's an attorney down there is a marathon runner she loves like jogging <laughs> jogging into downtown um, so this is a lovely area and she runs along the bluff too it's it's quite nice And as you can see, you can get a big home, but it's not a big lot. You're still having neighbors all around you and it's that boxy modern construction to take advantage of getting as much square footage as possible into a lot, you know, based on all the setback and height requirements that they might have. Okay, so basically, I think like I said, for about one and a half million, you can get a comfortable, nice family home pretty much throughout the Seattle area. That's the top of what I would call sort of normal. <laughs> and once you move north of 100, or I'm sorry, 1.5 million, you're getting into what I would consider sort of fancy or elite or uh, luxury real estate options. So just because I know if you're from out of the area, it's hard to tell sometimes the good from the bad. I just sort of created this list of what I consider to be the nice areas of town. So north of Seattle, we've got Richmond Beach, we've got the Edmonds Bowl, and we've got the Highlands, which is a very prestigious gated community. Uh, this is the place where you can find an 8,000 square foot, 100 year old colonial house with three acres of land and an eight car garage. It's that type of a thing. And those properties, uh, the last sale I saw in there was for about $4 million. There's nothing for sale in that community right now. Uh, I think the homeowner's dues there are $2,000 a month. So uh, that's, that's true luxury, truly like the top, top end of the market. You can buy in the Edmonds Bowl and the Richmond Beach area for about one and a half to three million. 
uh, getting closer to Seattle near downtown. You can buy on the Magnolia Bluff uh, for between one and four million. You can buy in Queen Anne, which is even closer to downtown Seattle, one of the oldest neighborhoods in town. It's at Queen Anne Hill. It's on a big hill. And um, so they've got wonderful views as well in some cases. So Queen Anne, uh, old Victorian style area between one and seven million. And then on the other side, so away from Puget Sound, if you go to the east side of not across Lake Washington, but in the Seattle area on the the banks of Lake Washington on the east side of Seattle, uh, there are some lovely neighborhoods there too. So the Windermere neighborhood, the Laurelhurst area, uh, typically they're gonna be between one and three million in those areas, but uh, closer to the water, I have seen some that are as high as 7 million, 10 million. Uh, if you remember the Far Side comics, Gary Larson, the cartoonist, lives in the Windermere area. Uh, if you are familiar with Seattle, or, or even if you're not, our mayor <laughs> lives in the Windermere area. And uh, so that's a, a great place to live. It's very close to the University of Washington. So my grandparents actually built a home in Windermere when it was just the edge of town. And uh, they both worked at the University of Washington. It's near Children's Hospital as well in that area. Then uh, south of Seattle, in between uh, the downtown Seattle and downtown Bellevue area is an island in Lake Washington. This is called Mercer Island. And I-90, the I-90 freeway goes right across it. This is a very well thought of area, very excellent schools, very prestigious. My mom had some partners at her law firm that lived here. And in Mercer Island, uh, let's see, prices probably start at 1.5 million for something small and older. And I've seen them go as high as 17 million there. So that's, that. yeah, Mercer Island is a, luxury address for sure in the Seattle and Bellevue area. It's very close to both. So Madrona and Madison Park, that area will be one to three million again. There's another gated community called Broadmoor, which is next to the Arboretum. So the Arboretum is a giant tree park here by Lake Washington and the University of Washington. And Broadmoor is uh, sort of a private community nestled right into it. And homes in that area start at two to three million is what I'm seeing right now. Downtown, Capitol Hill has been a popular area. It has a lot of uh, nightlife historically. It's also very close to a lot of hospitals and very close to downtown Seattle. So. Uh, there, I, I knew a guy that I went to school with, his dad lived there and he could walk from his house into, his dad was a dermatologist, walk from his house into downtown Seattle, walk into the, the main drag in Capitol Hill, not necessarily the safest area at night, but uh, certainly prestigious. And there are some, some nice areas and some very expensive homes there. Capitol Hill is the area where the Chaz Chop stuff was going on over the summer with coronavirus, the summer of love. So uh, that that is urban. If you don't like the urban flair, <laughs> then that might not be a good one to hit. Um, and then one other sort of prestigious area is called Bainbridge Island. And this is actually west of downtown Seattle. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if you can see the dotted line here. West of downtown Seattle, there's an island right out here and it's accessible by the ferry. So you can walk on, you can park your car over here in Bainbridge Island. You can walk on to the ferry, which is cheaper than bringing your car. You can commute over here in 20 minutes and land in Seattle and walk off and you're just in the middle of downtown Seattle. You could bus or Uber or walk to wherever you were going from that point. We had a friend who was a lawyer who lived out there. Uh, lots of IT guys live out there. Uh, all right. so. Let's switch over to looking at the Bellevue side of the lake. So here's Bellevue. And uh, this little knob right here along 520 is Primo Real Estate. So we've got Medina, Clyde Hill, and Hunts Point. Bill Gates built his famous house on the waterfront here in Medina. 
over here we have Lake Sammamish, which is a nice, you know, waterfront area close to I-90 up here, close to 520 up here. So uh, this is about as far east as most people end up wanting to go. If you've hit Issaquah, if you keep going further east, you'll hit Issaquah and then you'll hit like the mountains and the forests and the ski area. So Issaquah is kind of the edge of civilization to the east. <laughs> but up here in Kirkland, uh, there are a lot of nice homes as well, a little bit more of a family area. And then uh, up in Redmond, you're close to the Microsoft campus and a little bit farther east, uh, north and east of here, you're gonna be hitting farm country, Monroe, Maltby, uh, horses, acreage, that type of thing. So if you did want something more rural, you could go out into this area. I know several families out here with nice yards. Um, one has sheep, one is in a development where everybody has an acre uh, and they are able to drive in. I think one of them at least works at Microsoft. So uh, that's a, a good area for that type of lifestyle. If money is no object, you can really get into some of the nicest areas in Seattle for two to three million dollars. and. Uh, if you're going elite, you know, if you're Bill Gates, you can always spend more. But for the most part, if you're um, coming in from California or someplace else, uh, that two to three million dollar point is kind of the top of the normal luxury range of homes. And you could certainly get something very nice uh, in that price range. So I hope this has been helpful as you explore luxury real estate in Seattle. Uh, one other resource that I did want to point out was this uh, crime map. You can see this type of thing if you go to trulia.com. And as you can see, the, the darker spots are areas where crimes have taken place. And this is very faint, but a lot of the crime traces Highway 99, as well as being closer to I-5. And uh, this is probably Lake City way down here. Oh no, this is Lake City way down here. So uh, if you are looking at any homes or addresses in particular, you can always look it up in Trulia and see what's going on. Also, because a lot of people have questions about the light rail, I've included a light rail map. This is showing, oh, it's again, it's very faint. I don't know why they can't do a higher contrast picture, but this is showing where the routes are going to be. So this is downtown Seattle, <clears throat> this hub of the green, pink, blue all coming together. It goes across the I-90 bridge here, it looks like, along Mercer Island. And then up north and south along Lake Sammamish, as well as following 405 on this side and I-5 on this side up to meeting at Linwood and the, going up into Everett. So right now they've finished construction through uh, the University of Washington. This is the end of the line at this point that we're at the end of 2020 as I film this and I'm seeing construction going in all along here up to the Linwood area where I believe they're projecting that to come in the next couple of years. So uh, this has been kind of an exciting development factor just in terms of what will it do to property values. So this has uh, been a wonderful time with you. I hope this gives you a good orientation to the area as well as a sense of what your money can buy in different parts of the city. If you have any questions, uh, please reach out. You can give me a message here. You can uh, email me. You can visit my website, Home Pro Associates. I actually have, this is an article that I posted on Home Pro Associates. So uh, if there's anything else that I can do to be of assistance, I'm really looking forward to connecting with you and helping answer your questions about relocating to Seattle from California or another location or just uh, changing around if you live in an area of Seattle and you wanna look someplace else, uh, we can talk about that too. So again, Emily Cressy, let me know how I can help. I am here to serve.